Fourier and Diaz. Those guys started a speculation, and I think that it had legs, and I hope that it gets revisited. And that is, hey, we're going to go ahead and fight, but guess what? We're not going to go ahead and fight for five rounds. So for all you people that, uh, that wanted to see Dustin and I fight, or Nate and I fight, we are going to do it, but now we're going to give you almost double the time. Oh, and by the way, in exchange for giving you double the time, you're going to put a title up known as the 165-pound championship. I love that. I don't know why this has been resisted so much. And you guys love it too. You guys agree with me. We're all on the same page. The fighters want to do it. Kevin Lee's calling for it. George St. Pierre's got no problem with it. Conor McGregor's been discussing it. I don't know what the pushback is. That's the part of this scenario that as we play through, I don't know what the pushback is. I'll offer you one piece. This hasn't been stated by anybody, but I'll state it for you. I think a problem with coming in with this 165 pound championship is that now you're only five pounds away from the welterweight championship. That's, that's just not enough. That's not enough discrepancy. Now you got guys that could drop down, guys that could go up. I understand that for fighters wanting to hold multiple titles, that that's a really cool thing. I understand that. I support it. I'm one of them. I get it. I ask that you understand that for a promotion, it can be a problem should the guy succeed. We're seeing that right now, as great of a moment as it was, for Daniel Cormier to go out there, belt versus or, or, two champions, belt and belt for Stipe's belt. As awesome of a moment was that, as that was, Conor McGregor walking out there, 145-pound champion, to take on Eddie Alvarez, belt and belt, as cool as that is for a poster. What do you do once the guy succeeds? We saw what happened with Conor McGregor. He left the sport. He gets stripped at 145. They got to wait a few months, let him get through some... They stripped him at 155. It becomes a little bit of a log jam. The fans start to get confused. The fighters in the back start to go, well, what about my dreams? What about my goals? What about the whole reason that I'm in this sport? The promotion itself is going, look, we've laid out all this material with a belt over this guy's shoulder, and now I guess we've got to Photoshop that out, or maybe we should just do it. There's just a lot of problems with it. So what I'm presenting for you, do the 165-pound title. I don't think that what I'm saying, I don't think this is going to happen for uh, Poirier and Diaz, but I do think that there's a little bit of time if we all get on board and we all make enough noise. I do think that there's some opportunity here. And if not for them, down the road, let's do it. The promotion in the sport loves belts. We know that. Vince McMahon loves belts. Boxing loves belts. But we're starting to see that and it's starting to get exemplified through the interim championship. Many people push back on that. Some people are like me. I love it. But I love those belts. I get it. I get it from the marketing standpoint. I get that something has to be on the line. You guys got to understand, when you're fighting a mixed martial arts, by the way, when you're fighting a mixed martial arts, it's not like white people used to have to fight. If you guys will understand, if you lose a mixed martial arts fight, maybe you lose a little prestige. Maybe your ego takes a little bruise. Maybe, maybe you lose a little bit of money. But back in the olden day, it was important that you had people in your village that could fight. Because if you couldn't, it cost you your life. It cost you territory. It cost you beliefs. There was real thing, real things that people were fighting for. Because those real things are gone, and because this is unarmed combat, because this is a sanctioned sport with competition, we got to dangle something out there that they'll fight over. Because you're not really fighting over land anymore. You're not fighting for territory and family and life. So we created something known as a title belt. Great. It worked. But I think that those belts are important. I think that that piece of marketing really works. So I like that a championship is up. But what I'm offering for you, if we can all concede how important this is to promotions, if we can see that boxing loves it and Vince McMahon loves it and Coker loves it and Dana loves it, all I would suggest is now let's just make it real championships. I don't like the real versus the – I think they're all championships. But what I'm saying is you add more weight classes, all of a sudden you don't have the same need for the interim title. All of a sudden that narrative and that dialogue goes away. If you have a 165 pound title, one of the pushbacks has been, what do we do about the 170 pounders? They're all gonna wanna drop down and the 65 pounders are gonna wanna move up and the divisions are just too close. Hey, 170 becomes 175 and we don't even fight for it. We don't go, okay, new division, what are we gonna do here? Tyron Woodley, you're now the 175 pound champion. Number one contender at 170 pounds. You're now number one contender at 175 pounds. This has been done before. This was done by the NCAA. When the NCAA came in and they did weight changing rules, and I've talked to you guys about that extensively in the past, but one of the other things that they did, aside from the one hour weigh-in, is they added seven pounds to every single weight class. 
I ended up being a 197 pounder. I had started out that season at 190 pounds. 190 goes away, it becomes 197. So this has happened before, and I think it's a way to solve the problem. We then have also seen today, in, this is all in conjunction with simply trying to figure out the goddamn mystery of who's going to headline Madison Square Garden, which is on no November 3rd. And you can't keep the mystery a secret for too long. This is not just a marketing ploy. This is not just a way to, to build anticipation. There's licensing issues, and the guys have to get on with it. And whoever you're going to I'll step in a fight anytime you want me to. And there's a few guys in the back that are just like me. When you're asked to step into a main event, it is a little bit different. I'd still do it, and there's boys in the back like me. But it's a little bit different because now you're talking about a five-round atmosphere. Okay, every day matters. When you've got to get in five round shape as opposed to three round shape, every single day matters. Every day that you've got to get out of bed earlier than you want to, put on your shoes, go out that front door and get your miles in when you're looking at a five round atmosphere is different. So the athletes have to be contacted. They've got to be given enough time. They then have to go through the licensing requirements. So each and every day matters. What I'm speculating towards, and I was right, by the way, I realized that I was wrong that John Jones versus Gustafson isn't going to headline that show. But guys, in many ways, I was right. That's exactly what they tried to do. They tried to do it. And when John said, no, I'm refusing to do it or whatever, however that went, they then tried to put Gustafson in. So I was right. I hit both guys. I hit my bulls and my bears on that one. I also am wrong for anybody that wants to give me a hard time and that that fight isn't going to happen. And now we're being told that that fight may happen. Jones versus Gus. This is as... this. Breaking news. I'm talking moments ago. Gus versus Jones, December 31st. So it's the same fight. We're only talking about just over a month later. But for some reason, it looks like it's not going to come together. So what's the new prediction? That's my whole point of all this. What's my new prediction? As we're running out of time, I'm starting to think we're probably going to have a scenario where we elevate Dustin Poirier and Nate Diaz to the main event.